I had no idea how many people I would piss off by learning 3D resin printing. My sculptures start off as a liquid, sometimes I go very heavy unnecessarily for the heavy supports, and then I end up with a bunch of these trees. In a year, I've almost filled up a 5 gallon bucket. And no, they don't end up in the ocean, I recycle them. This is my logo, Stealthy the Emo Ghost. Let me show you the whole process of how I thought about how to recycle these supports. If you don't plan, you plan the fail. Here's the concept. What if I 3D printed a mold? The mold will look like this. It's two pieces and it'll come together and the liquid will pour in from the top. Once the plans were approved by me, the pour holes went in first. Duplicate, add a box, turn down the opacity. Size down, duplicate. Select both boxes and squish. Turned off the back box and inside you can see the indent of my design. Next, I voxel merge to create the hole in the bottom of the box. It looks great, but to have them click together, I need to add some pegs. Pegging is also a verb. They would click together just like this. Sign my work in case this ever ends up on the antique roadshow. I deviated a little bit by adding the pour holes in the bottom instead of the top. Export as an STL file to the desktop and here in Lychee Slicer, I choose my printer, which is the Photon Model X2, hollowed out both pieces to save on material, and next I'll have to generate some automatic supports. This process only takes a few minutes and then I have a printable file. This print will take an estimated three hours to finish. I'll be using a water washable resin. This is clear green. Give it a shake to make sure everything is mixed well and then I pour it into the vat. It looks like melted down green apple Jolly Rancher. Don't eat it, don't lick it, don't slurp it. Out of all my printers, this is the one I use the most. It's big enough and it's a 4K resolution printer which is plenty for the jobs I need it for. After watching half of Avatar 2, the print is finally done. It looks like something out of Wizard the Oz. 3 hours 40 minutes, not bad. I remove it from the printer and put the build plate straight into the isopropyl alcohol bath. The uncured resin that's on top of the model will wash away and also clean my plate at the same time. I buy these on Amazon and these are the two brands I use. Uncured liquid resin is kind of toxic to the skin. You don't want to be touching it, but in my object, there is some floating around. I remove it from the build plate with a spatula, a metal spatula. Blast it with a heat gun to make support removal easier. Calm down, I don't throw these away, I keep them. It looks awesome, a little bit of shifting, but that's because I have to replace my FEB sheet pretty soon. Forgot to put a drain hole, so let's get that liquid out. I'm gonna be using a drill. The resin is pretty tough, and they even make tougher resins. You don't wanna chip it, so go very, very slow. Wow, that's a lot of resin that leaked out. It goes right back into the bath so it can wash out the inside. For the other half of the mold, I'm going to use a smaller drill, and it worked successfully. I even added a second drill hole on the other side. This side did not have as much resin. I tipped it over, let it all evacuate, and put it into the bath with the other one too. Drain them out and let them dry. With a clean brush, I'll borrow some resin from the printer. Brush it on to the mistake that I made earlier with the drill. I'll place the broken corner back onto it, and with a UV flashlight, I blast it. This chemical process hardens the resin, and this is how the printer works. Right away, you can feel the heat that this process lets off. The corner is back on successfully, very, very tight. I want to cure the insides just in case. It helps that I use transparent resin. I place it onto the rotating table in the curing machine and blast it for 17 minutes. After all of the uncured resin becomes inert, it is now safe to handle with bare skin. The two pieces click together successfully. A 3D printed Stealthy fits in there perfectly. Now we have a fully completed mold that we're gonna test out. Let's gather some supports. I put it into the curing machine just to make sure I cure all the resin. I got to thinking, I don't wanna do it this way because it's gonna cost a lot of electricity to run this machine. I'm gonna grab a reflective surface and go outside and let it cure in the sunshine, which is free. My man's mold release. It's like sprayable lube. The supports are done curing. Let's grab a handful and I put it into a ninja blender cup. I want to be ninja. What's interesting is that when I blend it up, let it grind, is not that much material. It's like that much. Imagine, it was a liquid before. I poured some of it into a cup, rubber banded the molds together. I want it secured so I don't want any leaking. I picked up some of this casting material from my local art store. I mix equal parts A and B together in a cup. When these two chemicals mix together, I have two minutes of workable time. I pour in the grounded up supports and give it a stir. Already you can feel the heat that's coming from this chemical reaction. The viscosity starts to thicken real fast. I use a funnel, plug it into the hole and I give it a pour. I should have poured faster. It starts to clump up. Things started to get backed up so I used a stick to shove everything down in there. The mold is finally filled and it takes about 20 minutes to fully harden. I'm not going to make you wait. Let's go ahead and remove the rubber bands from the mold and take it out. Removing the two halves in the mold is going to be a piece of cake. So I thought. Frustration, anger, and pretty soon rage starts to develop inside. Even with the flathead screwdriver and a lot of force, it wasn't prying apart 
as easy as I thought it would. I used the drill to unclog the hole where the plastic kind of hardened into. I'm 15 minutes in on trying to pry this thing out of the mold. This is where my lizard brain starts to take over. I need to crack the shell to get to the nut. I'm supposed to be a professional artist, but I'm having a meltdown here on film. Of course, make sure you're wearing goggles when you're doing this. With the other end of the screwdriver, I start slapping it. And I know throughout the whole video, you're like, wow, this is going to be epic and successful. Nothing can go wrong, you thought. This is where I gave up. This is the aftermath. I took a break, but another solution hit me. We're going to silicone mold it with platinum silicone instead. Nothing sticks to silicone. This is even food grade. I'm going to show you how to use this material. 